Hey everyone, welcome back. Chad or Patriot Astro here. Elephant in the room. I know everyone is still waiting on video three in my astrophotography mini PC build series, where we finally get it all installed and working. I promise it's right around the corner. I need about one good hour of clear skies to record the final portion of the video. Then some editing, which I expect will be completely unpleasant and very lengthy, but that's my problem. Today I wanna to add on to a discussion from the last video I published, which covered the remote copy plugin for Nina 2.0. I love how that plugin lets me easily replicate captured images during my Nina sessions. But if you watch that video, you may remember this unfortunate transition towards the end. All right, you may see something else in my ending file sync. And this opens up a can of worms. If you missed the video, I'll link to it up top now. Okay, so how does that video and this video go together? Well, the previous video showed you how to use a plugin to replicate your imaging session files captured throughout the night over to another location that could be as simple as a local USB drive, a remote file share, or maybe even an internet connected storage service like OneDrive. In this video, I'll show you how I add to this concept by using a script I created that is executed at the end of my advanced sequences via a Nina instruction. This script I created replicates a bunch of other stuff I like to have handy the next day or maybe even days or weeks later. Some of this is about backing up what's important to me and some of it's just about having information where I need it, when I need it, without having to plug in and power up a system I already packed away. I'll show you how to get a copy of my script, how to install it, how to configure it, and how to use it. Sound good? Other than images taken during a session, what else would I want to back up from my imaging PC? Well, a lot actually. Nothing too big from a storage perspective, but important, yes. As of today, I'm using this script across all of my mounts to gather, PHD2 log files, my Nina profiles, Nina log files, my Nina templates, SharpCap imaging session captures, and the Patriot Astro scripts folder as well. Do I need all of this? No. Well, not until I need it, and then I really need it. The PHD2 log files can be really helpful. Maybe when processing, I notice I may have a guiding issue that doesn't seem to be weather or seeing condition related. Or maybe it's just time to dive into the logs to address a known guiding issue. Or maybe it's just a known mount issue, and I want to sort out general backlash or gear meshing issues. The PHD2 log viewer can read these log files and provide lots of info and help me sort it out. Nina profiles and templates, I just like to back them up each session. If your profile ever gets corrupted, or you have a computer or drive related problem, or you just want to install a new computer with the same settings, these two sets of data can be a real lifeline, and having backups of these will really make your day if you ever need them. Nina log files, similar to the PHD2 log file use case. They can just help me sort out an issue from last night or several nights back. Maybe a Meridian flip failed or autofocus went a bit sideways for an hour or so. These logs may help me sort out why that actually happened. SharpCap replication is just a way for me to move those files if I haven't grabbed them yet from the imaging computer. Since nothing else is automating that process for me, why not have this script do it too? For me, nine times out of 10, there won't be anything in that folder to replicate anyway, but when it's there, it saves me from having to give it any thought. And why not back up my scripts folder? As you'll see shortly, I also write the script log files within that folder, and those give me insight into what the script did on any given night. Why not have it handy as well? Another quick point before I really dig in deep, my script doesn't only replicate the current state of those items, but also creates an inclusive zip archive backup of the current state every time it runs. This means I have access to the current state right away, but I can also go back to see the state of any of that data from weeks ago if needed. Don't worry, I do have some controls in place to help you limit the size of each backup archive as well as the number of archives retained, so don't panic about disk space just yet. The good news is, you can use the script the way I do or customize the task list to fit your own needs. It's not too difficult to get it running, and I'll show you how to do it right. But first, if I had a lawyer, they would tell me to say something like this. The author assumes no liability for you losing files as a result of using these three scripts that are shared with you. The script is provided as is without warranty of any kind. The entire risk arising out of the use of or performance of these sample scripts and documentation remains with you. In no event shall the author be held liable for any damages whatsoever, including without limitation, damages for loss, interruption, or information arising out of the use or inability to use the script. If you don't understand the script, you don't have to use it. Hope I didn't scare you away, though. I find it helpful and thought some of you might as well. Don't modify it if you don't understand it. 
for anyone that's wondering, the script has been tested and works both on Windows 10 and Windows 11 without any need for modification. Buckle up, here we go. Let's pick up where the to be continued message left us in that last video. All right, you may see something else in my ending file sync. And this opens up a can of worms. So I'll just address it here today. After I stop the Robocopy plugin, I make sure guiding is stopped and then run an external script called pa underscore eon dot bat. This is my Patriot Astro end of night script that I'll share with you today. See, I love having Robocopy replicate my imaging session, but there's some other stuff I like to have available to me as well. Now, how to get them. Go to patriotastro.com and click on learn more. Yeah, I know some of this needs updating. There's not enough hours in the day. Click on end of night script. Download the zip file by clicking here, literally clicking the word here. Once the download completes, open it and copy the included PA scripts folder wherever you want that your user account can access on your system. I use an admin account, so I just copy it to the root of the C drive. It's easy to find and the file path is shorter to type when adding it to a sequence. Open the new PA scripts folder and you'll see there are two files in here. Right click and let's edit the PA underscore Eon bat file. I'll use Notepad++ for this, but you can use text edit or whatever you prefer. Up toward the top of the file, there are two entries you need to edit. Remote root needs to be defined as the destination path for your file copies. I use the same destination root folder that I used with the remote copy plugin. If you remember, that was from underscore EQ6. There's an example just above the setting here. Also define keep how many files. Each time the script runs, it creates an archive zip file of what's been moved. If you want the last 10 to be stored remotely, leave it at 10. This also determines how many local script files we'll keep as well. I'll change it to three here today just for testing, but I'll set it back to 10 or higher later. If you wanna read through the script, go for it. But here, I'll quickly do a high level run through. It first generates some date and time info that it'll mostly use for file naming. It checks to see if the local script's log folder exists and creates it if needed. It also checks to see if a backup folder exists inside remote root we just defined. If not, it creates it. I keep saying remote here, but remember, just like the remote copy plugin, this could be a local destination like a locally attached USB drive. Now the script starts writing to a fresh log file, and then since I want PHD2 logs, I kill PHD2 now if it's running to make sure I don't get hung up with any exit dialog prompts in PHD2 that could cause me an issue in trying to retrieve the current log file. As a side note, this is also why I stop guiding in the sequencer before my script executes. Now the interesting stuff happens. My script also uses Robocopy to transfer everything I want. I do this and some other stuff via a loop in the batch file. But what am I looping through? Well, that's where the second file comes in. Let's open the PA task list file. I'll put the notes about the file on screen so you can see what each entry means. These notes can be found within my script. This is a CSV file, which is comma separated values, where each task is a line requiring five comma separated entries per line. And this is also critical. You must have a blank extra line at the end of the text file or the final task in the list will not run. Field one is the name of the task that will be logged. This is just for the log file and so you know what each line is for. Field two is the complete local folder path of the task where the files of interest reside locally. Field three is the remote folder name to use for this task. The folder will automatically be created with this name if it doesn't yet exist inside your remote root location. Field four is any Robocopy optional matching that may be required for this task. This either needs to be a single blank space or a valid matching pattern that can be used by Robocopy. As an example here, for PHD2, I only want to move files that have the word log in the name and end in .txt. Field 5 is a backup via zip option switch. It either needs to be set to 0 or 1. If you set it to 1, the files that are replicated for this task will also be included in the zipped backup archive. But if you set it to 0, the files will be replicated but not put into the zip file. All files from these tasks are always replicated as expected, but some can additionally be zipped and stored as part of the backup zip file. We'll keep a number of these backup zip files around based on your keep how many files parameter earlier in the script. My thought process is this. 
you likely don't want to zip and back up large image transfers from apps like Nina or SharpCap to limit disk use. We can just keep those replicated files as they are without also adding them to the zip as well. The backup zip file is more for backing up previous night's configuration settings and logs that we may need to retrieve or sort through at a later date. So the script loop will use the task list info to log data, robocopy the files into remote folders, and then add everything it should into a zip archive file. After the loop ends, the script goes through the current list of remote archive zip files and local script log files and deletes whatever it needs to based on your keep how many files definition in the script. Lastly, it exits with the correct error level to give you a pretty check mark in the Nina sequencer on the external script instruction line. Oh, and as you're making any modifications to these files, make sure you save your changes along the way. All right, ready to test this out? Before starting, I'll go to Equipment, Guider, and Connect PHD2 that'll start the application. Once it's running, I'll go back to the sequencer and start the sequence. This is the same sequence as before, with the remote copy plugin included, but also my script at the very end. Let's watch the folders as I accelerate through this to the point where the PA end of night script runs. Okay, get ready. Watch the PHD2 icon at the bottom of the screen. There goes PHD2, terminated as expected. The log file is started. Now each task cycles through creating folders and replicating files, as well as adding items to the backup archive zip file when requested. Once done, the log file will open on screen and the sequence will end. First, we can check to see that the latest Nina session was replicated by the plugin. Yep, looks good. Even the older sessions were retained, as expected. What about everything I moved with my end of night script? Well, I can drill into the Nina logs and see they're all replicated here. So were my Nina profiles and templates. These are great to have as a backup. I also have my PHD2 log files. This is something great to have at your fingertips so you can use it with the PHD2 log viewer. Yeah, and I hear you. You want a video on that too, I know. My scripts folder, any sharp cap files, they all made it over here. What about the backup folder up here? This is where the zip files of everything replicated by the tasks that was told to be added to the zip file resides. What's added to the zip file though, not just files sent over today, but any other files that were already here as part of this entire process from previous days as well. This backup zip file is a current state of what is replicated here in the folders as of right now. To keep the backup zip file sizes manageable, I suggest not adding in things like sharp cap images. I'm just trying to take a snapshot of mostly logging and items I want to back up of to protect against data loss, things like configuration files. The date and timestamp is in the file name. If I go into the zip file, I can see what was placed here. Right now I have one backup zip file and also one script log file. To make sure this doesn't get out of control with too many files, the script uses the keep how many files variable you defined earlier to determine how many we should keep. And since we're mentioning the script log file, it's useful for seeing what was replicated and if there were any issues. You can see what was found and replicated or skipped per robocopy task. And at the end of the log, we can see what backup files existed and if any pruning of that list had to happen. My current variable is set to three as a test and we only have one file, so there was no need to delete any zip files. I'm gonna speed up the video and run this a few more times so you can see file pruning in action. Since we have three files now, the next execution should cause the oldest to be deleted. And there we go. Only the most recent three zip and log files remain. I'll set mine back to 10 for now, but even more is okay too. Before I let you go today, let's go back to the advanced sequencer one more time and show you how my shared sequences are being updated to incorporate this great plugin as well as my end of night script. I'll remove everything and just drag over my basic sequence end template. Here I warm the camera and park the scope in parallel at the end of the session. But I also added a note of where you can place the file sync at session end template. Only do this if desired, but if you do, it will run in parallel to the warming and parking. Make sure you get the script location right and modify the script as needed. For basic sequence start, just drag in the file sync at session start with a note advises. Here, make sure you set the robocopy source and destination and you're ready to go. 
As you already know, Nina can do some amazing things to improve our astrophotography. Nina 2.0 was a huge leap forward, and with the addition of plugins, we get new features and solutions for edge use cases more quickly than a normal development cycle would allow for. Adding to that, as you saw in this video, we can perform other tasks during a sequence via external scripts. I found this to be quite useful, and hopefully you will too. Now the video end housekeeping. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share with others. Reach out to me in the comments via email, my website, Instagram, Discord, or any other way you can find me within normal, uncreepy tolerance levels, of course. Be on the lookout for my mini PC build video right around the corner. I promise it's coming. Make sure you get out there and get those telescopes pointed up at the sky. Put some of what you already learned into practice. And of course, clear skies.